for the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Perspective is everything. The dictionary states that when something is considered in perspective, it is considered as a part of the complete situation so that you have an accurate and a fair understanding of it. Synonyms for the word perspective include aspect, viewpoint, mindset, angle, frame of reference. How we see things matters. What we see greatly depends on how we look at it. A difficult past, a sheltered life, social influences, pop culture, mass media stereotyping can greatly influence what we see and how we see things. And our perspective only changes when we consciously and gradually work to free our minds. Consider the following quote from legendary boxer Muhammad Ali. Looking at life from a different perspective, he says, makes you realize that it's not the deer who is crossing the road. It is the road that is crossing the forest. And self-help guru Wayne Dyer says, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at will change. Perspective is everything. We have the ability to change the meaning we have given to an event. It doesn't change the event itself, but it does change how we understand it and what it means to us. Some of you know that I keep this pair of glasses on my office desk. They help me reframe what I see. The glasses remind me of how large God's vision actually is. When I'm thinking small or stuck in my own perspective, I actually put these glasses on and I imagine how wide God's vision truly is. The simple act of reframing, of changing my perspective, changes how I understand things, how I understand people, and even how I understand the events going on around me. Shifting perspective is a tool that gives us a wider view. Our Christian faith is a way of seeing. Our Christian faith is also a perspective on life. Here's where I was on Monday of this week, Evergreen Cemetery in Detroit. This historic cemetery is off of Woodward, just south of Seven Mile, I met church member Carol Robb there as we were placing her brother Bill's cremains in their final resting place. A cemetery, usually considered a place of death or endings or pain or sadness, well, that is one perspective. But a wider view shows something more. Do you see the tall tree in the middle of the photo? It might be hard to see, but it's right in the middle of the photo. It's right next to the grave marker for Carol's family. We placed her brother Bill's cremains right under that tall tree in the middle of the photo. And as we did that, praying prayers, remembering Bill, remembering the perspective that our faith gives, Carol told those of us gathered a story from her family history. You see, in 1913, two young girls who would have been Carol's aunts were buried in this 
cemetery in that very place. Both girls died from some kind of childhood illness. Carol didn't know what it was, but it took them swiftly and tragically. They did not have the chance to grow up. They died so young. Their names are engraved on the family stone just behind the large tree you see in the photo. At the time of her death, one of the girls had received a sapling, a sapling oak tree, which she brought home from school just before she became ill. And despite their grief, Carol's family decided to plant that sapling right there in the cemetery. And now, look at it. More than 100 years later, it is this amazing oak tree, so tall, so majestic, providing shade and majesty to this hallowed ground, reminding all of us who would see that life towers over death, and nothing can stop life, not even the grave. Of course, we could choose to see it as simply a tree in a cemetery. But with the perspective of our Christian faith, it is instead a lesson in resurrection, a lesson in what God sees and what God does, a reframing of what looks like the end that really is a new beginning. The book of the Acts of the Apostles was written in a time of transition. Jesus had died and he had risen, but many were not sure what was next for them. Their question to Jesus was this, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel now? And Jesus responds to this question by telling them about a way of seeing. Jesus describes a kingdom perspective, a reframing of their situation that makes all the difference between what seems like the end but what is really a beginning. Their question, are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel now? It's really this question. In the end, Jesus, is everything going to be all right? Does it all work out? Will we be okay? Or is the graveyard the end? That's our question too, isn't it? Ultimately, we want to know if it will be okay. With everything going on around us, we want to know if we can trust what we cannot yet see. Does it work out, Jesus? Or is the graveyard the end? Whatever we might be facing, it is our question too. And here's how Jesus responds. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, in Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Jesus' response is a reframe, a kingdom perspective, a way of seeing. What does it mean? What does it mean, especially when Jesus says, you'll be my witnesses in Not just Jerusalem, but Judea and Samaria and to all the ends of the earth. Jesus means that what we see now is not the end. Instead, we're invited to hold on, to trust that empowered by the fresh winds of God's Spirit, still working even now, that there will be a great turnaround, a redemption, a resurrection, like that oak tree springing up in a graveyard. And Jesus says this, we, you, me, are to be his witnesses, not just in the church, but out in the world. Witnesses that this is not the end. Witnesses to resurrection power. Witnesses that redemption happens. Witnesses to hope that something better is not just surely coming, but it's happening right now witnesses that God is still at work in the world today. And Jesus is clear about this. We are to go beyond the boundaries of the expected places with this message. Not just Jerusalem, but Judea and Samaria and all the ends of the earth. This means Jesus wants everyone included. No one's left out, no one's left behind, no one's kicked out or unwelcome. 
we can choose to see only a graveyard. Or, with kingdom perspective, we can see a giant oak tree growing right out of the grave into the glorious light of a new day. Perspective is everything. Our Christian faith perspective makes all the difference in the viewpoint of our lives. Listen to these words from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, a kingdom perspective. Paul says this, so, so it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, but what is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a physical body, it is raised a spiritual body. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. Composer and hymn writer Natalie Sleeth wrote the hymn of promise when she found out that her husband Ron had been diagnosed with inoperable cancer. He requested that the hymn be sung at his funeral, and it was. The hymn is all about having a kingdom perspective. The words remind us of the multiplying impact that such a perspective makes in our lives. They remind us to be a witness to what God alone can see. It makes all the difference. In the bulb, there's a flower. In the seed, an apple tree. In cocoons, a hidden promise, butterflies will soon be free. In the cold and snow of winter, there's a spring that waits to be unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. Brothers and sisters, perspective is everything, and our Christian faith perspective helps change what we see and multiplies the impact we can make for the sake of Jesus Christ. On this All Saints Sunday, won't you join me in singing with our kingdom perspective lenses on the last two verses of this hymn? They'll be on the screen. In the bulb there is a flower in the sea, a tree. In the cocoon, it's all here. 